Hi all, well here we are. Here's the gear that I finished the trail with and there's quite a bit of changes from what I started with and those of you that saw the first video I did on gear which was pre-hike will be able to then follow through now and see what I kept and what I changed out. So first thing is clothing. Um, about three days into the trail I got to Nell's Gap which if you watch the Nat Geo program You'll see how they talk about people that just dump tons of gear they don't need. Well, that was me. My pack when we set off was over £55, although we didn't know that at the time. Carrying way too much gear. And the first thing is I carried two pairs of trousers plus shorts plus long johns. Uh, Nell Gap, I went down to just the long johns and a pair of trousers, pants. But about halfway up the trail I changed out completely. I went to these REI trousers which I haven't found since. I think I bought them when we visited New York. Uh, I think they're called Explorer or something like that, Expedition or something. And they're quite a thick material but they convert to a shorts. And they were my favourite trousers. I wore them, if you look at my videos, nearly all the way up the trail. Either as shorts or later on as trousers it's got a bit colder. I kept the same shirt. The Magellan shirt, it dried very quick, it was very light, no issues with that at all. I bought these Sherpa shorts in Perrysburg, and they're just shorts, they don't make into trousers or anything. They dry very quick, um, but they keep the wind chill off if needed. Uh, they were good, you know, a little heavy maybe. In future I'd probably just stick with these trousers and a light pair of shorts, but they were fine for what I needed. I wore these gaiters just about all the way up. The larger gaiters that you saw in my first video, I got rid of them at Nell's Gap. Still liked gaiters, but went for something lighter. Plus, these had permethrin or something similar impregnated into them. And while we was on the trail, I got, I think, two ticks on me the whole of the way. And my son got quite a lot of ticks, including being bit. And I'm not sure if it's because I had these gaiters on constantly that the ticks just couldn't get up and onto my legs. But also it stopped leaves and sticks and stones etc getting inside my boots. So I would wear these again, I have no issues with them. The only thing was this strap, it's a plastic, that snapped. And um, OR replaced them but it took some time for them to decide they would actually replace them. Out of all the companies they were the worst for replacing gear I found and wanted the gear back and they wanted to inspect it and they wanted to report what happened etc etc. Undershirt was the same which is the, like this cheap Under Armour equivalent. I think I got it at Walmart for like seven dollars. I went through a number of these shirts. Um, as you see in some videos I wear a yellow one quite a lot because we were told that the bugs etc tended to stay away from the bright colours. So exact same shirt, I just got it in fluorescent yellow. I had a black one and I had a couple of these. But all the way up I did have one of these shirts. The socks I changed out. We got these smart wool, guaranteed for life, never wear out. They were thin enough that they didn't cramp up toes etc. As your feet swell and your feet do swell on the trail. I went up two sizes on trail. But if they do wear at all, which mine never did the whole way, then... Darn Tough will actually change them for you. I kept the mosquito jacket all the way. I can't use repellents on my body or chemicals. So at night when we get into camp, particularly New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, where the mosquitoes are horrendous, I would put this jacket on and that would prevent being bit. The trousers are sent back because I would wear these trousers predominantly and then I'd just put the leg part on when we got into camp. The rain jacket I kept all the way. I didn't use it in the rain a lot. I actually used it if I needed a windbreak more than anything. Or if it was a little chilly I'd put it on as an extra layer. It was light enough to carry for that reason. But because I went to an umbrella setup, I didn't actually need rain gear. And you'll notice I don't have rain pants at all. I sent them back very early. The soft shell I went to was this. Um, it's like a fleece hoodie from Cabela's. I want to say in Hanover I got that. Very light but thermal. You can wear it while you're hiking. 
it get wet with sweat but it dries very quickly but it also keeps the warmth the puffer jacket i carried all the way i just couldn't get that ability to have an extra layer and a safe layer on me at all times i mean it packs down very very small in a stuff sack uh, like a cricket ball or a baseball size and it's very light and i just felt reassured i had it as we got up north so New Hampshire and above, I did wear it at times at night, so I was glad I took it. The cook set, um, again changed it out fairly quickly, went to a titanium pot. We went to one cooker between us, because I hiked with my son, rather than carrying a cooker each. And then each of us would carry one of these smaller canisters. So as one canister ran out, we still had another canister and we just replaced the run out one when we got into town on resupply. So we constantly had a canister which had gas in and we never had to worry. Titanium spork, which I think I started with. A small lighter. I did have a small pocket knife, which I originally started with a leatherman. I sent that back. Um, but I can't find the small knife. I don't know where. And this is my food sack. My toilet kit basically i carried these little toilet pouches from mres and they were great and then i also carried wipes and i got rid of soap as well i was carrying dr bronner's soap sent that back and just carried wipes and we had two types of wipes one was hand sanitizer type wipes and the other one was actually peroxide hydrogen peroxide and that was because it killed norovirus and the only thing that would so we'd use those before we ate or uh, before getting into the sleeping bag at night. Anytime there's a risk that we could actually touch hands to mouth or something like that and get norovirus. Just standard wipes or routine cleaning. We just use normal wipes. But then at night you could wipe yourself over. Ziploc. Use a Ziploc for a trash bag. Rubbish bag. Put your wipes etc. in there and dump it when you get into town. The first aid kit. Stay pretty much the same. Moleskin, um, anti-allergens, antiseptic cream, etc. Did have times to use it, but not a lot. And I carried doxycycline as a preventative for Lyme's disease. Callum was the only one that actually got bit by ticks a couple of times, but it was no issue. But we did have a number of our bubble actually get confirmed Lyme's. The water system I went to was Platypus and or the smart water bottle. So I'd carry the platypus empty most of the time, but if I knew there was a long stretch with no water, or we were going into camp for the night and there was no immediate water supply, I'd fill it up with three litres before we actually got to night camp. Day-to-day -day use would be one litre, either again in the platypus or a smart bottle. The umbrella I spoke about, we met a number of PCT hikers who used umbrellas, and we decided to try it, loved it, so I sent back the rain gear, I kept the jacket obviously for a windbreak, but I sent back the rain pants, just found I didn't need them. Um, and I attached this to the backpack, and those of you that read my blog on Appalachian Trials, or there's a link on my blog site, would see that I actually spoke quite a bit about the umbrella. I had a different version, the Chrome Dome longer version, but unfortunately someone decided they liked it more than I needed it in a hostel one night. So I then ordered another umbrella from um, Go Light, but at the time this compact one was the only one they had. A little heavier because of the mechanism inside, but works perfectly well. They've since gone out of business, but I see someone else now is selling these chrome domes, and I love them. I will always hike with umbrella in the future. Electronics, I had my iPhone, headlamp, and then a charger for the iPhone. This would charge my iPhone about six times. It weighs about a pound, but in some of the areas, particularly up north, where you had long stretches without getting to a hostel or somewhere you could charge it, this was great for actually charging up my iPhone. I had an iPod, but post-trail, the screen blew out, like the LCD went or something, I don't know, but it, it was no use after the trail. I had it in an hot box, but again, I would hike with an iPod. It was great at times, just to put the buds in and zone out for a while. And or if we had a really hard climb, I put on some trance music or something or some heavy metal and, and get up there. Um, it wasn't a constant thing I used, but I was glad at times I had it. Also at nights, 
Um, I had earplugs with me, but sometimes I'd just put my earbuds in for my iPod and listen to some relaxing music to help me get to sleep. The sleep system, we went from the synthetic bags, which were like three or four pounds in weight, I think, to these Western Mountaineering down bags. These are 30 degree. And we changed these out very early. I want to say Irwin when it was still cold. But it weighs a pound, pound and a half in comparison to three, four pounds of the synthetic. And it will actually compress down to a really small size. Less than a rugby ball or football, if you're American. Um, whereas the synthetic was huge. In the summer, I used the silk liner. And in the winter, I had this thermal liner which added, so they say, but it added 15 degrees value. This is a 30, and that was enough. You know, if it got cold at night, I could use some of my clothes. But other than putting a hat on, if I remember in the north, I didn't really need any particular warm clothing at night outside of these bags. Now, we were quite lucky last year. It was wet, but later in the trail, it wasn't freezing cold. I had a winter gear package sent to me um, right before Musalaki and it included the hat, some thin gloves, extra socks so I only carried two lighter pairs so I had a thicker pair of winter socks, a soft shell and then a warm undershirt and to be honest we were lucky with the weather I don't think I wore this soft shell or this undershirt once or even the socks I think we got away with what we'd already been carrying and then I'd just wear the gloves and hat at times. The sleep system continued. I had this air mat. It's the Neo Air and it's the thermal one. So you could have it silver side up for warmer or the dark side for cooler. Loved it. It's light, slightly expensive, but the big Agnes that we had just didn't cut it. We went through five of them. They kept bursting um, at trail days. The actual Big Agnes people tried to find the holes, couldn't find it, replaced it with brand new sets. And then they would just seem to leak through the material. I don't know what it was. Caused a lot of issues, the Big Agnes one, because in the whites, mine started deflating overnight. To the point that every hour I'd have to wake up and pump it back up. And it was absolutely bitter cold and freezing in the whites. Laying on the floor and waking up every hour and then getting out in those conditions. It did not help not getting a good night's sleep. The Neo Air which we got in Hanover, um, which is Pennsylvania, I believe, if I remember. There, This then carried its way all the way through the rest of the trail. So quite a distance and no issues, and I've used it a lot since. So more than happy with that. The tent that I actually used, I had initially the Hubba Hubba, too heavy, uh, five pounds I think it is. Changed that to the Big Agnes... Fly Creek 2. Hated it. Lots of issues. Either condensation or leaking. during Brand new leaking during storms. You get in at night in the dry. Be fine. Wake up in the morning. Literally there'd be a pool of water inside from the rain. Just seeping through the floor. And I had the fly sheet. Uh, the ground sheet on it. So I don't know why. But I could not get on with it. I then at trail days changed it to the HMG Echo 2 which is a Cuban fiber, expensive, but loved it. Really super tent. Um, and that's why I kept these REI heavy trekking poles because the tent utilized your trekking poles to hold it up instead of having its own poles. And I liked the sturdiness um, and the adjustability of these trekking poles. So they worked for me. Tent was great. At the end of the hike, I gave it to my son. So now I have the Six Moons Designs Trekker which weighs about a pound. Again, it's Cuban fiber. I've only used it once. I'm going to put it through its paces hopefully this year. But if I personally had a choice, I'd go back to the Echo 2, if not the Echo 1. I just need to sort some finances out. The backpack, I actually went to this uh, HMG Windrider. I had the Osprey, which weighed about five pounds. And up the trail, Coley, who was a hiker that we was hiking with for a while he had this HMG Windrider not this exact one but the same model and he replaced it for a smaller pack and when he did he lent me this for the rest of the trail now this pack weighs about a pound and a half 
Cuban fiber. So I loved it that much that when I finished the trail, I bought a brand new one. I still have my Osprey, but I would never use it for long distance hikes. I would always use this HMG Wind Rider, more than happy with it. All right, talk a little bit about boots. Um, as you saw in my first video, I was wearing Keens. Those Keens stayed with me all the way till Perrysburg. At Perrysburg, I changed them out to some Reebok boots. They lasted less than three weeks, caused a lot of foot issues to the point I had to see specialists. Um, went into Loray, which is in the Shenandoahs. They only had Morel, and I changed to a trail runner because I just needed some sort of boot. Didn't even use them three weeks. Hated them. Again, caused a lot of issues to me. So when we got into Hanover, I purchased some more Keens. I bought the summer boots, which are these. They lasted me all the way to the end. However, not long after purchasing them, the sole broke away on the sides here and the toe cap broke away and one of these straps broke. Got in touch with Keen. They replaced them instantly, didn't want the old boots back, no issues, no concerns. So love Keen, love the boots, um, will always go back to Keen's and a great, great company. Can't speak highly enough for Keen. Alright, so for those of you that are interested in pack weight, which I know has got to be 99.9% .9 of you, remembering that I started on over 55 pounds. And this is base weight, no water, no food. Twelve pounds. So there you are, there's pretty much my gear. Um, which changed from day three when I reduced quite a lot down from the initial video you would have seen. Halfway up, changed out again quite a lot, partly because of summer and partly because gear started to fail or wear out or needed to change it anyway. Um, then had the winter gear sent to me closer to New England and the Whites. Didn't need it. We were lucky with the weather. Going through the Whites was phenomenally beautiful um, and we were blessed every single day we went through with great, great weather. And then we summited on the 4th of August, so before the heavy weather came in again. So we didn't need a lot of gear to actually finish up with. Alright, dreamers, hope this helped. If you need to get in touch, ask questions, have any comments, etc. Either post them to my blog or and email me and I'll be happy to help you. Happy trails.